Welcome back to the channel guys, VSD here, what is this? You might have already seen, I have the iPhone 14 Pro updated to the iOS 17. And yes, that's a developer beta. This doesn't really matter for this video, I'm running the latest software, the latest beta software on, on my iPhone 14 Pro. And I'm running the latest stable One UI 5.1 on my Galaxy S23 Ultra. Also, this video is shot in 4K 60fps for your viewing pleasure and, well, because I'm going to test animations. Now, do I know that it's not so fair to test a better software with a stable software? Yes, I know. Do I care? No, I don't really give, uh, yeah, you know, shit. This is gonna be the idea of the video to compare the animations that we see on the latest iOS 17, which will shape the future of iOS and iPhone. And of course, do the same here on my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, one more time guys for you to see. So I'm just going to now exit the home screen and initiate the Ozon display. So you can just see this hopefully beautiful animation. Now, all right. We all know that always on display on Apple devices is a bit weird. It's, it's not like what Android fans call a true always on display, but it, it is what it is, guys. So we're now on the always on display. If I click here the Samsung phone, nothing will happen. If I double click it, I will enter on my real lock screen. And if I click on the iPhone, guys, you see double click will get me this fancy animation. Now, when I say animation and I say fancy, yes, it's really fancy, guys. You can just see, I really like this depth effect. This depth effect is so easy to use, it's everywhere. And um, yeah, it's a bit hard to replicate this on Samsung phones. We can do this using two modules from Good Lock, but it's not stock. So this is what happens here when I am on the iOS, guys. So nothing really fancy whatsoever. I can still see some notifications on the Galaxy Store Bradley. I'm just getting a bit more information, but you know that you can customize this, but I won't, don't want to bother you with these details that are not so relevant. I am now going to go inside my phone, all right, and show you the real deal. Now, I'm on my main screen, as you can just see, guys. So if I go to the left, I'm gonna add some standard widgets here battery and that's it pretty much i can press edit guys i can probably try to edit a bit more so we have here a lot of widgets that you can apparently add okay let me just try to put the clock why not and um, what we see in all these recent um ios developments is that they really try to become more and more like android where you can just go and add widgets and it become a bit more customizable and this is actually quite good i also said this is one of my other videos that i did yesterday five things that apple ios really took from android please go watch this video and i do believe this is actually quite nice why because again this will just put the gas pedal on competition competition will lead to more hopefully innovation while they're just trying to copy each other and at the end we the users should win but because we're here to test animations let me show you what happens when i do like this okay uh, if you strike guys dynamic island nothing is gonna happen but you can just do this a bit on the left and boom then again get access to your notifications so one more time guys i want to do it so that you can just see i'm gonna first do it here guys so that we can appreciate what happens on the os and how fluid it is okay and i'm also gonna do it quite slow so that you can just see with me doing it what happens to the background all right so the background start moving a bit right and this is very clearly now to be observed here just see the line above the app store. So background start moving, zooming in somehow. We now get this very nice blur applied and then boom, at some point guys, now I'm not sure this might be a bug from uh, the latest beta or it might be like a design decision from Apple. At some point when you approach here, the search bar, boom, completely black because why? I guess you're just going on your lock screen. Now let's just do this on the Galaxy guys. Galaxy is also very beautiful. See, when I immediately start even pulling the curtain, I get this blur and this blur is applied everywhere. And the moment I start pulling on those curtain guys, the blur gets so much that eventually anything else just gets fully blurred until we get the final product, okay? So one more time, I'm just gonna show it like this. Now for my notifications, I'm gonna go to unveil my quick settings, it's just amazing and on the iOS guys, you know we cannot do this like this guys. If you wanna get your control center, you have to do this yeah, like this. But the animation is really very good. I'm just gonna do this one more time slow so that you can just see what happens. All right, boom. So the moment I now start to go for my control center, guys, see, boom, it pops up like this one more time. So first thing that happens, all this icon move to the left and you can just see this very interesting. Right now I'm using the focus mode, which is something like do not disturb guys. 
and you see what is going to happen right now the moment i start moving down boom it appears here and somehow my wi-fi icon ends up here which is a bit messed up but this is what happens okay and then we still have this very nice blurb light and then at some point we get these icons and they just pop up very beautifully on the screen and there is also this bouncy effect like we observed in stock android boom bouncy effect galaxy is not bouncing so much still very beautiful so one more time to swipe for your notification one more time to get down here to this menu but because we are here to observe the animations let's just focus one more time on the notifications i'm just going to unveil notifications this here is the notification center guys i have to admit it looks cool i'm not sure if i'm a big fan of it but yeah it's really cool you can just see how all the notifications are just piling up on each other like they are a stack of cards which i think is quite nice right and of course they're very readable now what happens if i'm doing the same on the samsung it's a bit more boring but you just probably get more usable space you get more notification on this screen which is also a huge screen right but they're a bit more static and i would say a bit more boring but usability is different from design and from user interface so now let's just see what we can do on both phones here while i'm here guys i can click and I can hard this command and I can also try to click the options and directly gonna go inside. This is by the way Nishan who has been a great supporter of the channel, so hi Nishan. So let's just try to see what else we can do. We can try to swipe, okay, apparently like this and we can just also make them go away. Now let's see what happens when we are doing the same on the iOS guys. If I try to do something there, yeah, I just, I can go directly to this, to this notification but i was not able to initiate anything else now if i just swipe like this i have some options so apparently i can mute for one hour mute for today and it's not bad guys but i'm not able to somehow reply oh i am but i have to kind of click right and then this is going to get opened in a new box and now i can hit like this or reply something like this which pretty much works but the implementation is different and in terms of animation this is what it looks like Right, so there is this somehow slow feeling on iOS. Everything is really so fluid, but also some slow. And how do we know this, guys? Because we have played with this animation, transition, and duration, scales, and settings. And if you slow down the animations on the one year, it will get so fluid like here. But, okay, it is what it is, guys. Here it is. We have the hour. We have this very nice, beautiful depth effect. And on the Samsung, it looks a bit more plain. Now, let me just go back on the home screen, guys. And let's just try to show some of the other animation that I do believe makes sense. So while I'm on the home screen, guys, see I have some widgets. That's quite nice. I can navigate. So navigation pretty much still seems the same. You know, you know which screen you're using, right? Of course, there is this search bar here. If I click on this, we're going to get this beautiful animation. I can put wallpapers and I'm going to get directly information from a Wikipedia or whatsoever. Now, this can also happen here, right? I need to go, of course, here and probably try to put the same. So if I go here and put wallpaper and style, I'm going to get some information and I also going to get like show more, right? So I'm going to get these cards. I can eventually access things wallpaper related on the Spotify, on YouTube. So functionality, I think, is the same. What is a bit better on the iOS is that it's somehow directly integrated here. But of course, you don't have the app drawer, right? So this is a limitation. But OK, forget about this. We're here about the animation. What happens if I go to the left to access my Google feed? Here, guys, it's going to be more flat, right? We still have circa this nice blur light, and I'm just initiating the next screen. And all of this feels like a very big pile of cars just moving around. Um, the iPhone is the same, right? So if I'm just moving between the main screen and the others, I'm observing the same. But when I go to the left, guys, I have again this zoom in effect, right? So in this case, I guess it's more like a zoom out effect. And boom, then I get all my widget screen. And I get this very nice blur applied everywhere. And there is also, guys, this certain element of bounciness. So see, every time I initiate a search, I go back, the screen is a bit more responsive and it's a bit more more fluid uh, and the same happens here on the galaxy uh, that's why i'm shooting 60 fps so uh, but you can just see that there is a difference i think the animations on the one year are a bit more pronounced they're also slower and this somehow gives a more immersive effect but guys the best thing really to do testing animations is just opening some folders but before we get there i want to show you something else so let's say i want to delete the this icon here i can click the icon guys Right, I can select my icons 
uh, moving them around, which, which is really good. If I do the same on iOS, guys, I can hold it like this. I can remove it, share it. I can edit the home screen. And now we're going to get this famous iOS icon dance. All right, so icons moving around, which is actually quite nice. This reminds me really of using an old iPhone. It's good that it's there. From here, of course, you can also add new widgets. And this is what I was saying, guys, that somehow iOS is going to, at some point, <clears throat> try to rival Android. And this is very good, guys. We pretty much see we have the same menus. We can search widgets, right? We can do all these things. And, and there is still this somehow appearance of the iOS that looks a bit more well organized. And, and I'm not sure why. It could be also because, you know, all these widgets here, they have this nice preview with the shadows. Everything here on the one area <coughs> is a bit more flat. You can just see even the battery widget, guys. If I am, for example, to click on the search widgets and try to search for the battery, I think I can... I'm able to explain. So take a look here. This is the standard Samsung One UI battery widgets. And it looks quite nice, right? But what we can do here, guys, we can just get an overview. Okay, widget one, four by one, widget two, four by two. See what happens on the iPhone. We always have this nice animation, this kind of like premium look and feel to this. And we have this crazy shadow. And, and I, honestly, I like this. And I do believe that, that Samsung One UI could also do a bit more into providing bit more animations in things like this. Of course, they should be optional. If you really like a fast and quick interface, you might as well opt out, but I would love to see something like this. Speaking about home screen arrangements, if I click on my One UI guys, probably access more things, do more things on the iOS, it's a bit more limited, but maybe not because still, besides adding all these widgets guys, right, I can go back and I can try to also add new screens, for example, and I also have this very nice thing at the end, which is called the app library. So you know that the iOS doesn't really have like an app drawer organized like this, but if I go to the very end of the phone, I'm gonna get this app library where icons are organized. And again, we see these layers. These layers are somehow missing in One UI. What layers? Let me explain, guys. I'm gonna take the app library and I'm gonna try to move it. So you see, the moment I start moving it, now the app library box here is gonna get on top. And this gives this very nice, somehow like 3D feeling. It's very immersive. On the One UI, everything you do, although it's quite nice, animated well, fast and quick, it's a bit more flat. And that's interesting, guys, because remember Nokia with Microsoft, I think Nokia Lumia was one of the first phones to be bringing back the flat design, where iPhone with Johnny Ive were putting a bit more effort into skewermorphism, like you have wood, real wood, you have real metal, real plastic, real stone, whatsoever, real glass. And then iOS also was redesigned by Johnny Ive. I'm not sure, was it iOS 7? I'm not sure. It was really a long time ago. And they also moved to this flat version. But what I do like is that they still have these depth levels. And depth levels are everywhere. You can just see this also, for example, when you're customizing your lock screen. I'm now on my lock screen, guys, and just see with the tap of a button, I can break the clock forward or just change the depth level, guys, and put it beyond or behind this element of the wallpaper. And on iOS, you can do this also with these new contact posters. It's really very easy. You just click here, guys, that effect, boom, right? One might say, but why is this important? How does this relate to animation? Well, it, it, it doesn't really, but it, it really focuses on user interface. And it's just very simple. They just do a cutout on the portrait, guys. And not only are you able to put text behind or above the object, you can also try to change the background. This is how I like it, and this is why I like it, guys. So apparently there are these nice styles that you can use, and just with the click of a button, you can decide to change the, that effect or not. But okay, let's go back to animations, guys. Now what I'm gonna test is I'm going to get here on this screen, right? And boom, go on the main screen again. Here, I think both phones are doing this in a very nice, very smooth way. One more time, again, we have this bounciness effect, like, okay, right? This is now the recent task, one more time here. Right, but going back on the home screen one more time. So the icons just go deep and then on the surface. One more time here. I think it's a bit more clumsy. See here, guys, one more time, all right? See here, one more time. And see here when I do it on the iOS. It feels so smooth and not only because, I think it's a tiny bit slower, but also because the animations are just different. All these icons, they just go a bit deeper on your screen and then up front on the surface. So let, one more time, check this out here. Boom, all right? And here, guys, all right? It's a bit 
more simplistic, more dull. We only have the icons that just shift a bit below and that's it. Then you get it on the main screen. And on the iOS guys, they, you see here, you see, you see what happens? Yep, they just move around somehow in the background and feels a bit more immersive. And I guess, guys, this is really a lot of uh, the home screen and the navigation shown. Now, let's talk recent menu, guys, okay? If I do it like this, boom, we are going to get here the famous iOS recent menu. If I get the one on the Samsung, boom, it's very quick, very fast. And you know, you have unlimited options, right? And yeah, uh, now also the animations. If I try to be very quick, okay, you see what happens? So one more time. One more time, okay, no, I'm not, yep. They kind of slow down. Here, guys, I like this better. This is really quicker, it's faster, so in general, like, this interface feels a bit tap quicker. Of course, sometimes it was just plagued by occasional stutters, which we don't observe so much now with the 8th Gen 2. And if you wanna close the applications, guys, again, I have a close all button here, boom. And on the iPhone, guys, you need to probably, yeah, there is none, right? So you need to do like this like crazy. Some other things we need to check. Let's now do some uh, folder opening. I have this social folder here and here. So, okay, this is how it looks like. On the iOS, the folder is completely centered somehow. And on the One UI, we have it a bit more aligned to the bottom of the screen. Now, guys, apps opening. Starting with the iPhone, opening the Telegram, boom. Closing the Telegram, opening, closing, all right? Here, opening, closing, all right? Opening, closing. The close animation is very nice on the Samsung. When you open an application on the iPhone, it pops up like this. When you just try to get out of it, guys, it will somehow minimize. One more time to show you like this. I like the closing animation on the Galaxy a bit better because again, here we have more immersive effect. The whole screen somehow like jumps, okay? And you can just see this by the background. Now I'm gonna open, close it. You pay attention here to the rocks. So open, close it, see everything jumps in and out here i think it's a bit more static although they still have the same effect right also a nice thing that i like when you open the folder we have this gradual blur effect applied this happens here also on the samsung now i don't think it happens on all samsung phones this blur is kind of like a premium effect but this is how it looks like now we can probably open twitter and see how it's gonna go opening twitter from here twitter open opening twitter from here boom I try to scroll it down a bit. All right, now we can just go out, and just go out and you can just see the closing animation. One last thing I wanna share you guys is the settings. So I can just go inside the settings. We're now in the settings, okay? And this is this bouncing effect, guys. We have the bounciness effect here, all right? But see, it's very limited. See how much or how big the iPhone jumps or bounces. It's just crazy, all right? One more time, like this, okay? So it feels a bit more entertaining to use a phone like this if you like things to be a bit more flashy and guys also something that i wanted to do before the end of the video what happens if i go to the airplane mode here we have a nice animation airplane is flying now from the airplane mode is the same okay one more time airplane flying airplane mode off what happens on the iphone all right yep it just changes the color but this is pretty much it. And I do believe that this is a very good overview of uh, the animations and uh, also user interface compared from the, what is gonna be the next hour 17 and the current One UI 5.1. And guys, I can hardly wait to get the One UI 6 better so I can just go back and do the same comparison with the One UI 6 better versus the hopefully then stable iOS 17. And then of course, after all of this is really stable, I'm just going to run this. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to sub. And if you like the video, leave a like down below and a comment guys. Stay safe, VST over and bye.